All right, we're going to start looking at the finite element modeling technique today. Um, what we're going to do, uh, sort of looking forward, is uh, begin by talking about the technique in general, and then we'll move towards how we actually assemble the same kind of matrices that we've seen before for finite differences, so the C matrix and the K matrix and all that kind of thing. Uh, but using a different technique that corresponds to the finite element technique. So let's start today uh, by talking about the problem that we're going to solve. So here's a two-dimensional computational domain. Um, if you look at this, you'll see that uh, the domain is irregularly shaped, and that's one of the main um, advantages of the finite element technique is that it can deal um, with irregular shaped uh, computational domains much more easily than a than a finite difference technique can. So we're going to solve um, this governing differential equation over the uh, this domain. So this is a, a conduction problem. Right here's the conduction terms. Uh, there's the potential for some volumetric generation, and then uh, heat storage gives us this transient term. Uh, on the boundaries, we'll admit the, the possibility of having a specified heat flux and also convection. And of course, then those two things have to sum uh, to equal uh, conduction uh, in the direction that is uh, perpendicular to the boundary. So here the normal vector n is defined as being um, perpendicular to this boundary. And then the last thing we need, if it's a transient problem, is also a, a set of initial conditions. So this is initial temperature distribution uh, over the entire computational domain. So we're going to look at the Galerkin weighted residual method for our finite element uh, problems. And the first thing we're going to do then is rearrange our partial differential equation so that it equals zero, which is what I'm doing uh, here. And uh, if I put the exact solution into this equation, then I should get, of course, exactly zero. If I put an approximate solution, such as what we're going to get with our finite element method, then what I'll get is the residual, which is the, the thing we'd like to be zero, but isn't zero. And so um, what we're going to do here is uh, actually try to make what's called the weighted average residual equal to zero. So we're going to, first of all, have to uh, multiply this by a weighting function. So my weighting function uh, at this point is uh, undetermined, but it's this function of x and y here. So we've now got the weighted residual, right? And then <coughs> we're going to average it over the entire computational domain. So the next thing I'll do is uh, average it over the entire area of this computational domain. And this is the weighted average residual. And this is what we're going to focus on uh, making equal to zero with the finite element technique. So here I've broken this uh, weighted average residual equation up into its basic components. So there's four integrals here, right? There's one associated with the, the storage. There's two here with conduction in the two directions. And then finally over here we have the, uh, the volumetric generation. So we're going to focus uh, first on the conduction terms, and basically the, the goal of doing this is to convert this equation from what it's currently in, which is the strong form, and we'll convert it to the weak form. So we'll see how that, see how that works. So here again is the uh, weak form it is split into these four separate integrals. And let's start by focusing on uh, this conduction term in the x direction and pull that one out by itself. So this is a double integral which means that we're integrating first over x and then over y or vice versa. So here I've written it again as integrating first over x in a strip and then integrating over all of the strips uh, over y uh, over the entire computational domain. So let's take this inner integral, the one that's in x, and apply integration by parts to it. So here's what integration by parts looks like, if you've forgotten. Uh, integration by parts is basically just an application of the chain rule inside of a derivative. Uh, so we're going to apply it to this particular integral here. And we're going to make the substitution then that u is equal to this weighting function f 
and v is equal to the function inside of the derivative so minus k dt dx and so with that substitution um, this is what you get you'll notice this first term is uh, just the quantity f multiplied by minus k dt dx evaluated at the eastern edge of the strip so at x east and uh, subtracted from that is the value at the western edge of the strip so x west and so if I make that substitution uh, you you get this uh, expression here notice that this term minus k dt dx at x equals x east is actually the uh, the heat flux in the positive x direction uh, at the eastern edge of the boundary so this is the heat flux in the positive x direction leaving the eastern edge of the boundary and then and then this term uh, k dt dx at x equals x west is actually the, the heat flux in the negative x direction at the western edge of the boundary. So that's also the heat flux leaving uh, that boundary. So this picture maybe makes it a little more clear. Um, I've turned an integral across the strip into uh, an integral across the strip still of a different integrand, but now I also have uh, the heat flux leaving uh, both edges of that strip. So let's go back then and substitute this uh, new strip integral uh, back into the double integral from where it came and you get this expression uh, which we can split into three integrals as shown here. So these three integrals are two integrals along a line so that's these two and then uh, we still have one integral over an area and that's this one here. So you can see from this picture what the uh, two line integrals actually represent. So the first one is the weighted uh, x-directed heat flux out the east side of your computational domain and the second one is the weighted x-directed heat flux out the west side of your computational domain. And then you still have this, this area integral. So if I were to do the same thing but now with the dt dy term uh, I'd get a very similar result, except for now I would have uh, the weighted y direction heat flux out of the north side of my computational domain, and then the weighted y direction heat flux out of the south side of my computational domain, and then this uh, other uh, area integral. So if you add all of these boundary terms together, what you end up with is the total integral of the weighted heat flux out of the computational domain. Right? Th these two terms are the, the heat flux <coughs> leaving projected in the x direction. These two terms are the heat flux leaving projected in the y direction. So in, in total you have the total heat flux. And you can write it then as the integral of the total heat flux in the normal direction uh, leaving the computational domain, which is shown here. Note that uh, Qn indicates uh, entering in the normal direction so the minus qn then is leaving in the normal direction so this integral that i've highlighted here then corresponds to the total integrated heat flux around the boundary entering the computational domain so here we'll move um, that uh, to the other side of the integral and we end up with this uh, expression here and uh, what you can see then is that we've ended up with uh, the, the weak form of the uh, weighted residual equation that we're actually going to try to, to use in our finite element uh, technique. So we have uh, still uh, the original two area integrals related to storage and generation. Uh, we have a new area integral related to conduction, different than the one we had before. And then on the other side of the equal sign we have this weighted heat flux integrated over the entire boundary. Uh, as, as shown here. So that's the end of this lecture. Uh, we have the equation that we're going to use moving forward. Um, in, in the next lecture we're going to talk about um, what the uh, weighting function is. There's actually going to be several of them. And then also what our approximate function for the temperature distribution is that we'll substitute into this equation.